Hello and good afternoon, everybody. This is Amber J. Welcome back to my channel. And as promised, I am going to be giving you four steps on how to get your bow ass, right? Because every every woman, right? Well, not every woman, but women. If you want to be married, you want a good man, right? You don't want you you tired of chasing little, little these little flimsy little line little thing but do this or whatever. You want your bow ass, right? You you want to know like how is it that some people be having these good marriage stories and why yours ain't came to pass just yet, right? And let me tell you something. God God is he understands your concern. He understands my concern as well. And actually let me just recap right this recap this right quick. Excuse me. Um yesterday I said that God had given me a, a word and a vision. I did not tell y'all the vision. The vision was this. The other day when I was wake like just like waking up I had a vision of myself. It was myself and there was a bunch of others like lined up to my right and to my left. And we were all bowing down at the foot of Jesus, right? He was like on the throne. We were just bowing down to him. We, I had on all white. Everybody had on all white, right? And and I remember him. It was like I was, I seen myself as if I was outside of my body and I seen him looking down on me. Now I was reporting for duty as, as normal, right? You know, just kind of like reporting for duty. I'm here reporting for duty. Aye, right, aye, right, Captain. But he was looking at me like, I feel your pain. You know, he was kind of looking at me like, I'm not too much concerned about you reporting for duty. I'm concerned about how you are, right? The Bible says this, God will accomplish that which concerns me. God is not after your performance. He can get so many people to do something. He is God. If he needs something done, he can get anybody to do it, right? He is God. So God is not too much worried about what you're doing more than he worrying about how you are. This is the truth. And that was what my vision, that's the vision that I had. And it is like, it was like really, really real. Like every day I wake up, I'm like, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? God is like, Amber. I'm, I want to know how you are as well. You know, and so um, that was the vision that I had. And I think the, the reason why it wasn't just me um, at the foot of Jesus, the reason why in my vision, I, there were so many people on my right, so many people on my love um, is because there are many people that are going through what I'm going through. And God wants me to be a deliverer of the word. And I'm going to be a good steward of the word. word. Otherwise, why would I report to him and ask him, what should you have me do? Right. And so that's what prompted this word. Right. How to get your Boaz. Right. Um, if you're a woman and like you're dealing with loneliness in your heart, that's a concern that he has. He does not want you, his daughter, to walk around you with a broken heart. If you got to have a bad relationship, um, it, he, he's concerned or if you're in a bad relationship he is concerned god is not a god that's gonna be like well look what you got yourself up into i told you you should do that mm -mm. that's not him i'm telling you right now that's not that's not our father that no 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 ma'am okay salvation is more than just the end of life experience salvation is an in life experience you in a bad relationship you can get salvation up out of there you having a broken heart, heart of loneliness, you can get salvation up out of that, right? Salvation is, it goes so much deeper than you going to heaven or hell. You have really limited Jesus. You have really put him in a box if you just put your salvation as an end of life experience, okay? So that's what prompted the word about how to get your Boaz and more so is about how to be a root, okay? So today we're in chapter two and I'm going to go down to, um, I'm going to skim verse eight. And then we're going to go down to 10 and 11, okay? And I'm going to show you what the what today's lesson is about. So going down to uh, Ruth chapter 2, verse 8, it says, Boaz, Boaz says to Ruth, Dear woman, listen to me. Don't pick up any grain in any other field. Do not go anywhere else. Stay here with the women who work for me. Then I'm going to go down to chapter 10, excuse me, verse 10. And um, he says, Ruth says to him, um, she bowed down with her face to the ground. She asked him, why are you being so kind to me? In fact, why are you even noticing me? I'm from another country. And Boaz, Boaz says, I've been told all about you, 
I've heard about everything you have done for your mother-in-law since your husband died. Since your husband died, I know that you left your father and your mother. I know that you left your country. You came to live with people you didn't know um, before. May the Lord re reward you. This is the point I'm trying to make. Okay, so at this point, Ruth has, she started working in the fields, right? And she's working because she wanted to work. She told Ruth, um, excuse me, now in the, in the beginning, like, just let me go in the fields and whoever lets me pick up after them, look, I'm going to just do that because I got to do something with my life. And I'm, I'm not about to just sit up in the house all day. Like, I got to do something, right? So Ruth was not in pursuit of a man. Ruth was not trying to be noticed. She was trying to do something with herself. She was trying to build herself. And that is what got Boaz's attention. She was not trying to be an, att an attention seeker, right? And I think as, um, as women, especially young women in Christ, whenever we, especially like in this modern world that um, has you has given you the idea that having your life always on camera is a norm. I don't believe in that. I believe some areas of your life are supposed to be sacred. Not, but not everybody's supposed to have access to your every move. You are supposed to keep something sacred. And so this, you know, the time and age that we live in right now, um, it, 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 um, it makes you kind of like by default uh, an, an attention seeker right? It, it, just by default. But Ruth was not that woman. She was so focused on what she was trying to do. She was shocked that Boaz even noticed her. She was like, why are you, how are you even noticing me? Like me, you know? And so, um, don't be an attention seeker. Be a, uh, um, uh, a goal-oriented woman, be um, in, invest in your life, um, be a purpose-driven woman, be a vision-driven dri woman. And if you don't have one, seek the Lord, seek ye the kingdom of the Lord, and all these things will be added unto you. That's what the Bible says. And the Bible also says this, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord, which basically means that you, whatever you're doing, do it as if he commanded you to do it. Jesus Christ commanded you to do it. So you got to be diligent with your life. You got to be serious with your life. And don't always be an attention seeker. You know, um, you, cause whoever, whoever's supposed to notice you will notice you. And Boaz, he noticed her. And then after he noticed her, he went and asked about her because he was so interested without even her even trying. Okay. So you guys, you know, um, go back and you read chapter two, you know, um, Ruth and Boaz, just to recap today's lesson, she was not an attention seeker. She was just a person diligent about her work. She wasn't doing it for showboat. She wasn't, what they say, um, doing anything for clout. That was not her. She was That was not her, okay? And she still, she still got the eyes of the man, you know, that came and, you know, rewarded her life so greatly. So um, we're already eight minutes into this thing. You guys be blessed. Um, I'm going to start putting my um, email information. If you guys have any questions regarding anything, go back to day one of um, how to get your bow ass because I give you a background of me and you know how long I've been working in real ministry, not YouTube ministry, baby, real ministry. Okay, real ministry, right? <laughs> um, on the feet ministry, on the street ministry, you know, volunteering, doing all that stuff, Bible study, you name it, wrote a curriculum. Yeah. So go back to day one of that. Until